Okay, grade 11. Let's look at the second part of this question. I think it's from November 2015. This question is a little bit more complicated, so I separate it out from the first half, which is quite straightforward. Now, menthol, the substance we can smell, smell in mentholated cough drops, is composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. During combustion of a 9,984 gram sample of menthol, it is found that 28,16 grams of carbon dioxide and 11,52 grams of water is produced. Now, before we go into the questions, let's have a talk about what's going on here. Combustion means burning in air. So what this means, or burning in oxygen, what this means is menthol plus oxygen is going to react, these are my reactants, to give me my products, carbon dioxide and water. This is always what complete combustion is here. Okay, so we know because we are clever people and the question told us that menthol has got carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So here in the carbon dioxide is carbon and oxygen and here in the water is hydrogen and oxygen. So these could have all come from um, the menthol because there's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and menthol but they didn't because we added oxygen. So when we do any calculation in here, we don't actually know what the balanced equation is for this. So we need to keep track of where the elements are coming from, where the atoms are coming from. And we know that in the carbon dioxide and the water, the carbon can only have come from the menthol because there's no carbon in oxygen. And the hydrogen in the water can only have come from the menthol because there's no hydrogen in oxygen either. We can't trust any value we've got for oxygen because we added oxygen, okay? Because you can see here, it's gonna ask you to find the empirical formula. But we can trust the carbon and we can trust the hydrogen because that's what the balanced equation is telling us. So let's have a look at this first part of the calculation. This first part's quite easy. It says, calculate the mass of carbon in the carbon dioxide. So now carbon dioxide is not completely um, carbon, there's carbon and oxygen. So what we have to do here is use the percentage composition, okay? So this is going to be the carbon divided by the carbon dioxide, okay, because this is how we find percentage composition, times 100. Okay, so you've got to forgive me with the division signs here. So let's find the percentage of carbon is going to be carbon is 12, and I know from the previous calculation that carbon dioxide is 44. So it's 12 over 44 times 100. And if we put this into our calculator, we're going to get 27,27%. So 27,27% of this mass of carbon dioxide is actually carbon. So the mass of carbon is going to be 27,27% times the original mass of the carbon dioxide, 28,160 equals 7,68 I've got 7, grams of carbon, okay? So that is the mass of the carbon in the carbon dioxide. And how is this going to help us? In the next place here, it's going to ask you to determine the empirical formula of the menthol. And so if we know how much carbon is in the products, we know how much carbon is in the reactants. Okay, so this is a seven mark question. You're gonna to have to do quite a bit of work to solve this, okay? So let's, I've made this table because everything keeps wiggling around on my screen and it's very frustrating. So I'm trying to keep everything together. So let's check, we're gonna have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, okay? So we have to figure out what we know about everything. Now we can figure out the moles of the carbon because we know how many grams of carbon we've got. Remember, in this reaction here, okay? Remember what I said to you, all of the carbon in the carbon dioxide has to have come out the menthol. So this 7,68 grams of carbon we're going to be able to turn it into moles, okay? So the moles of carbon, interesting, the 
the moles of carbon is going to be N equals M divided by M. Okay, now we are looking at the element carbon. This is the mass of the element carbon. So we're going to use the number of the relative molecular mass of the element of carbon. Okay, so this is going to be 7,68 divided by 12, which is giving me 0, 0,64 moles. Okay, so we found the moles of carbon because we're going to need the moles to form the molar ratio. Okay, now we need to find the number of moles of hydrogen. So we can find the number of moles of hydrogen from this thing of the water. Sometimes what they do is the first part of the question is a guide to the second part of a question. So if we find the mass of hydrogen in this water, we can find the moles of hydrogen because remember in this equation methyl plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide and water only the um, the only place the hydrogen in the water can come from is the menthol so if we use the same method of percentage composition we can find out how many moles of hydrogen we've got so the first thing we have to do is find the mass of the hydrogen okay so this is going to be the percentage composition. Okay, so let's do the percentage composition first. So this is going to be, if we look at water, the hydrogen is 2 over 2 divided by, what is the hydrogen water is? 2 plus 16 is 18. Okay, so the percentage composition will be this. So let's have a look. 2 divided by 18 times 100 is 11,11. Okay. So now the moles of hydrogen is going to be... Oh, wait. I mean, not the moles first, the mass. We need the mass first. The mass of hydrogen is going to be 11,11% of that 11,520. Okay, that's going to be the mass of the hydrogen. So I've got here 1,28 grams of hydrogen. Now, this here, this mass of hydrogen, is the mass of the element hydrogen. Okay, because we work the percentage composition and that tells us elements. So now the moles of hydrogen, okay, N equals M over M. So it's 1,28 divided by 1, okay. So we're going to get 1,28 moles of hydrogen, okay. Let's put this on the next line. So that's how many moles of hydrogen we've got. Now the problem is we need to find the moles of oxygen but because we've got oxygen on the left hand side in two, two of the things on the left hand side in the menthol and in the oxygen we can't use, um, we can't just add these oxygens together. So what we have to do here is go back to our original mass of the sample. <coughs> okay, so look here, what's the mass of the menthol? This is 9,984. And now we're going to say, what is the um, oxygen? Okay, the oxygen is going to be menthol minus the carbon plus the hydrogen. Okay, and now we're talking about masses here. So this is going to be 9,984 minus... We had this mass here, yes, 7,68, okay, and we had this other mass we worked out here, 1,28. So the mass of oxygen, okay, let us employ our calculator. I 
I've got 1,024 grams of oxygen. Okay, now these are, this is the max of the oxygen atoms. It's not oxygen gas, it's oxygen atoms. So let's find the moles of oxygen is N equals M over M. And I'm cheating and not putting the formula here. Please put the formula every time. Okay, I'm going to get... I've got 0, 0,064. So I now have a mole ratio. 0, 0,64, 1,28, 1, 0,064. And 0, 0, These are my moles. Okay. So this is how we find the empirical formula. We have to find all of the moles. Okay. And now what do we do? We have to divide through by the smallest number. So the smallest number is this one. So this one's going to become 0, 0,064 divided by 0, 0,064 equals 1. This one's going to be 1, 1,28 divided by 0, 0,064. Let me work that in my calculator. This gives me 20. This is not unreasonable because this is hydrogen, yes? And there's always a lot of hydrogen in carbon compounds. And this is 0, 0,64 divided by 0, 0,064. And according to my brain, that's going to be 10. Let me use my calculator. Yeah, boy, I've got 10. So I now have my ratio. Are we finished the sum? No, we are not. What did the sum say? What is the empirical formula? This is the last step to earn you your mark. It's going to be carbon 10, hydrogen 20, oxygen 1. Do we write the 1? No, we don't. It is an invisible 1. But if we don't write this formula, we don't get the mark. So this is a very important part of the step here. Empirical formula, C10H20O. Okay, so that's the formula for menthol. Now let's look at 6.2.3. It says to you the molar mass of menthol is 156 grams per mole. Determine the molecular formula of menthol. Okay, so the empirical mass, empirical mass of menthol is going to be 12 times 10 because carbon is 12 plus 20 because I went 20 times 1 in my head plus 16. So let's have a look here. 12 times 10 is 120 plus 20 plus 16 equals 156. So this empirical mass is equal to the molar mass. Yes? Can you see that? The empirical mass is equal to the molar mass. So that n factor that combines the empirical formula and the molecular formula is 1. So now what does the question ask you to do? Determine the molecular formula of menthol. We have to write it out. Molecular formula of menthol. And yes, it's exactly the same as the empirical formula that is not going to stop you writing it down again for the last mark and there we go we are done